Hello everyone and welcome to my first Stargate What If. What ifs are fun. They give you a chance to really explore how different our favorite stories would go if things were slightly different. My personal favorite what if scenarios are of the crossover kind. What if this faction met another faction from a different universe? What if a certain device existed in another universe? Stuff like that I find interesting. But Stargate doesn't really get to do this due to their characters having the same media we do and thus knowing who or what these crossover characters slash things they are meeting are. Okay, one, that's Star Trek, and two, it's ridiculous. For these what ifs, I'm going to be ignoring that and asking the questions that no one was asking before. Such as, what if the Yuzong Vong invaded the Pegasus Galaxy? And really, who would win in a war between the Wraith and the Yuzong Vong? So a little context in case you're not familiar with either group. The Wraith are a race of humanoid vampire insect-like aliens named to the Pegasus Galaxy. Their backstory is a little muddled depending on if you go by the show or books, but they would rise to become the dominant power in Pegasus, defeating the builders of the Stargates in a war and driving them out of the galaxy. They would go on to establish a near never-ending cycle of rising up to feed on the humans in the galaxy, leaving enough left alive to repopulate, going into hibernation, and rising up later to do the same thing again. The Yuzong Vong are a humanoid race from the Star Wars universe, specifically the Legends continuity. You might have noticed I said they are from the Star Wars universe, but not the galaxy. That's because they are not from the galaxy far, far away. They are from another galaxy and later moved to slash invaded the galaxy we are all familiar with. They used to be a peaceful, force-sensitive species living on a living world, until they found themselves at the center of a war between two droid species. They would rise up and defeat both species of droids, but became warlike in doing so, conquering their galaxy and falling into a massive civil war that resulted in their galaxy being left uninhabitable. Their own living world became so disgusted by what they became, it cut them off from the Force. They would have no choice but to leave their galaxy and find a new one. It's not clear how long they were in the Void, but eventually they found the main Star Wars galaxy and would invade it, leading to a war that cost 300 trillion lives. These are two pretty big bad guys, who do look kinda similar going head to head. They also share more than just looks, as both races use organic technology. Now, I'm not really going to do in-depth breakdowns of each faction's tech unless I think it's necessary. Instead, I'm going to go over an overarching story that I think would happen as a result of this invasion. So let's say the Yuzong Vong find the Pegasus Galaxy as they travel in the Void. They would first start by sending scouts into the galaxy. Now in Legends, the Vong had probes and scout ships in the galaxy for thousands of years prior to their actual invasion. Using that as a model, they would have likely viewed the Wraith's callings at least once. I'm not really sure how the Vong would react to the Wraith. In Legends, part of the reason the Vong invaded the galaxy was because of the rampant use of mechanical technology, which they saw as abominations. But as I said, the Wraith used organic technology. And given the kind of sadistic nature in which they feed on humans, it could gel well with the sadistic nature of the Vong. However, I doubt there would be any chance of an alliance or some sort of coexistence between the two groups, as the Wraith do not tolerate other advanced groups. And even with some similarities, I doubt the Vong would want to share this new galaxy. So I think logically, and also for the sake of a more interesting video, the Wraith and Vong would go to war. As I said, the Vong would have sent probes and scouts ahead of their main fleet to learn about the galaxy. At some point, they would send spies and agents to gather information and destabilize the galaxy for their invasion. However, I think the Vong would run into some problems here. Destabilizing the Star Wars galaxy isn't all that hard. With major factions such as the New Republic and Imperial Remnant at each other's throats, along with minor factions such as the Hut, Chiss, Ziziru, Hapes Consortium, and various warlords to name a few, all having some kind of conflict with each other. So it's not that hard to destabilize these groups by having them fight each other, or just send in spies to learn about them. But the thing about the Pegasus Galaxy is that under Wraith rule, it was pretty stable. Granted, this is only because of how powerful the Wraith were and most other human groups in Pegasus are technologically well... This about sums it up, huh?
The only groups who, in theory, could fight the Wraith are the Travelers, Veneer, Jedi, and the Replicators. But all these groups have issues with getting them to fight the Wraith. While the Travelers and Veneer do have spaceships, the Travelers live only in their ships and said ships are getting old and breaking down. Even if the Vong agents manipulated them into sending out every ship to attack the Wraith, even during the Wraith's hibernation, they would be little more than a nuisance. The Veneer are kind of interesting to see what would happen, as the Veneer, and the Asgard as a whole, are a dying race as they have cloned themselves over and over again. Given the Vong's expertise in biotechnology, I wonder if they could offer that to the Veneer to have them attack the Wraith. But given the Veneer lost to the Wraith and the Veneer were hiding on a toxic planet, I kind of doubt the Vong could find them. The Janai do actually want to fight the Wraith, but lack the ability to do so. That being said, they do have a spy network spread throughout the galaxy, and I think the Vong would infiltrate them and use them as a proxy to fight the Wraith in the lead up to and during their invasion. It would also give them a glimpse into a future faction that would enter the fray, but we'll get to that later. The Replicators are a machine race, so right off the bat there's an issue, but the Wraith had shut down the code making them attack the Wraith. I doubt the Vong would be able to turn it back on or even get close enough to try. And that's assuming they would even want to do so given the Replicator's machine nature. As for infiltrating the Wraith, they would have some issues there as well, since the Wraith are telepathic and could sense the Vong. Now, I know people are going to point out that the Vong don't have a Force connection, and Force powers such as mind reading don't work on them. Which is true, but the Wraith's telepathic powers are not based on the Force, and therefore shouldn't have an issue in reading them. Granted, there are ways around this, having Wraith DNA can fool a Wraith, and I can see the Vong doing this. But even if they did this, getting the Wraith to fight each other would be difficult. I don't doubt there are power struggles among the various Wraith Hives, but as long as they have humans to feed on, they really have no reason to fight each other. This puts the Vong agents in an odd position. They can't really use any minor factions to fight the Wraith, nor can they destabilize the Wraith from within. Especially if the Wraith are in hibernation. They could try and have their ships attack them during their hibernation, but the few Wraiths still awake would most likely awaken the other Hives before they could destroy each one. Sure, the agents themselves could try and wake up the Wraith early when there aren't enough humans to feed on, but that would run the risk of the Wraith finding out about the Vong and thus knowing there is a threat out there. I imagine even the Janai are hesitant for an operation into a Wraith Hive without serious backup. So they would have to try and get someone else to do it, and really, who would be dumb enough to do something like that? The arrival of the Atlantis expedition would probably be the best thing that could happen for the Vong and their plans to invade the galaxy. In the short five years the expedition occupied the city of Atlantis, they devastated the Wraith in more ways than the Lanteans ever did in their hundred year long war. By waking them early, they caused the Wraith to fall into civil war due to a shortage of food. They activated the replicators, causing further losses for the Wraith defeated the Replicators, taking out another major faction. And with the Janai under their thumb, they can learn more about this faction that seemingly came out of nowhere, including things such as their home galaxy and some events they took part in, such as a certain drug that could create problems for the Wraith later. And then, when Atlantis leaves the galaxy, it means in theory that Earth's interest in Pegasus would theoretically be over leaving only a weakened Wraith as still really the only major player in Pegasus. I mean, what are the Coalition going to do with no spaceships, and most worlds not having any advanced technology? It would be the perfect time for the Vong to invade. And would you look at that, the rest of the Vong fleet has arrived. The invasion is here. So finally, after about however long it took to get here, I'm going to talk about the war between the two. Which I'm going to divide into three parts. Ground combat, space combat, and a general overview of the war. In regards to ground combat, I think the Wraith are going to be at a significant disadvantage for two reasons. First is the Vong's warrior culture. Their warrior caste lives to fight, or more accurately, they live to die. For their warrior caste, death was considered a great honor. 
so they didn't really have a fear of death, yet they come prepared to a fight. With armor that resists blasters, slug throwers, or even lightsabers. Amp staffs that were living creatures that could take on the forms such as staffs, spears, and whips that could spray venom on its victims. When it came to close up hand to hand combat, they were ready. And this leads to the second point the Wraith's lacking when it comes to ground combat. Not that they are weaker than the Vong physically, but they don't really have any close combat weapons besides knives. And their ranged weapons, which would give them an advantage over the Vong who are more focused on melee combat, well, they're all stun weapons. None of them have any lethality at range, and even the Vong have their own version of a ranged weapon that acts something like a homing missile. Now, the reason for this is because the Wraith want to feed on their victims, and they need to be alive for that. And this leads to another issue. The Wraith do somewhat work in close combat, but that only works because of the Wraith's ability to feed that gives them an advanced healing factor, strength, and near immortality. Being able to take lethal damage and survive, however, that depends on how recently they fed. And the issue is that the Wraith can seemingly only feed on humans. The only time we see a Wraith attempt to feed on a non-human was in the comics, and that failed. Granted, the fact he tried makes me think he thought he could do it, but without knowing for sure, it's going to put the Wraith in a really hard position in any hand-to-hand -hand or ground-based combat. And assuming that they could feed on the Vong at all, they would still have to get past the armor they wear, which, by the way, besides drones, most Wraith don't wear armor. And that's not even getting to the fact that the Wraith seemingly have no ground-based vehicles for combat, something the Vong do have. Even with the Wraith's telepathic abilities, while every Wraith is somewhat telepathic, only a few can really use it effectively in combat, aka mostly queens, who odds are are not going to be on the battlefield. When it comes to space combat, I think things are going to be a bit more even between the two. Now, I'm not going to sit here and go over every technical detail when it comes to the ships, as the Wraith don't really have many ships to talk about. All they have is darts, cruisers, and hive ships. Meanwhile, the Vong have a whole wiki list of ship classes and tech to them. I will say both groups have certain similarities. Both use a form of plasma cannons, for example. Something I do think worth mentioning is the Vong's Dovin Basils. These are multi-purpose organisms that work by creating micro-black holes that serve as thrust for Vong ships, act like shields, gravity whales, and can even strip shields from an enemy ship. They can also be used as super weapons by pulling a moon or another celestial body into a planet. In space combat, the use of this shield draining in combination with their offensive weapons made them deadly on the battlefield. However, something to note is that the Wraith don't use shields. They rely entirely on their ship's hull, which can be healed if power is diverted to it. So the Dovin Basil's shield stripping wouldn't really be of any use against them. And they do have a weakness. They can be overwhelmed as they can't be in two places at once. In Star Wars, the New Republic used the tactic of staggered shots, and a tactic used by the Imperials was to have two ships for every Vong ship. And the Wraith already rely on swarm tactics. It's how they won their war with the Lanteans. Granted, there's less of them now, but you could argue that the ones left are the best since they have survived up until this point. It's kind of a weird situation in ship combat where both groups feel like they counter each other, but not in a way that would mean total defeat. It would rely more on the strategy used by each side, which leads us into the final part. Now, I will say overall, I think the Vong are more advanced when it comes to organic technology, or they use their tech in a variety of ways that can be used in warfare that the Wraith just don't use. However, I do think the Vong are going to have a serious struggle in this war. See, in Star Wars, the Vong had a plan in which they would take Coruscant, as it was the political and economic heart of the galaxy. And by taking it, they hoped that it would crush the morale of the whole galaxy and that they would surrender. Which kind of did happen since the fall of Coruscant was the end of the New Republic. Granted, it was immediately succeeded by the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, which did win the war, but the strategy the Vong used did make sense. The problem with the Wraith is that 
well, they don't really have a home world, or at least one of any significance to them. They have no political center or economy to speak of. They live in their hive ships and each one is a nation onto itself, which is backed up by a complement of cruisers and darts. There was an estimate of around 60 hive ships at the start of Atlantis, with around 39 being confirmed destroyed by the end of the show, thank you fandom. However, it's likely the Wraith have built replacements over time, so let's say there's a little less than the original total, 25 or so. Destroying 25 ships doesn't sound that hard, but these are the biggest, most powerful ships the Wraith have that basically act as moving fortresses. Pinning those ships down is going to be difficult, and remember they are backed up by a complement of at least three cruisers each, and again that is a minimum of what would be with them. The best way I can describe how this war would be different from the one the Vong fought in Legends is think of the difference between the invasion of France and the invasion of the USSR in World War II. Even if the Nazis took Moscow, odds are Stalin was just going to keep putting every one he could between him and the Nazis, never surrendering. Odds are the Wraith would never surrender and the Vong would have to destroy each hive ship to achieve victory, along with any cruiser or dart that managed to survive. It would be a long, drawn-out conflict, which is the worst thing that could happen for the Vong. See, when the Vong first entered the Star Wars galaxy, they were weak from their journey through the Void, having used up almost all their resources from their world ships during the journey. They needed time and territory to replenish their resources. And while the New Republic was willing to let the Vong have this as they did want another war, the Wraith would never allow this. The second they found out about the Vong and where they were, they would launch a full attack, even with their civil war going on due to a lack of food. If anything, it would make them more violent to protect what little they have left. Which again is going to be a massive issue for the Vong. If the war goes on for too long, they have no way to replenish their forces. Another problem for the Vong if the war goes on for too long is with technology. Again, I think the Vong do have more ways they can use their tech, but their tech also won't advance. They were very strict about what they could use their tech for, what could be researched, and it had become stagnant. Meanwhile, the Wraith are an extremely inquisitive race. We see them constantly try and find technological solutions to problems. For example, in their first war with the Replicators, they used a virus to shut down the command codes making them attack the Wraith or when they hacked into Midway Station to get to Earth. I can see them trying to come up with a biological weapon to defeat the Vong, something the Vong might not do. Even if the Vong had access to the Hoffman drug, a drug that would make any Wraith who fed on a human die, I could see them not using it to its full extent just so the Warrior cast can have their war. And the Wraith have no issue using technology from other races. For example, the Stargates, which have massive strategic importance. I could see the Wraith using them to move troops and darts around the galaxy, scout out where Vong forces might be. Meanwhile, the Vong would refuse to use the gates because of their mechanical nature. They might know to watch them for Wraith forces, but not use them to their full advantage. So while the Wraith take time to learn Vong technology and find weaknesses or things to adapt for their own forces, I can see the Vong having a debate about whether or not they can study Wraith technology. As the war goes on, the Wraith would be able to close any tech gap. Something else we need to consider is that while the Wraith are still the dominant power in the galaxy, they are not the only one. I don't think the Veneer would get involved, at least not directly. The Janai would most likely be under the control of the Vong, at least for a while. Due to their lack of space flight, I could see the Vong using them as cannon fodder or spies to sabotage the other side. But at some point, the Jedi would realize what was going on and turn on the Vong. They may hate the Wraith, but they want to be the ones standing on top at the end, not kneeling at the feet of another. The Travelers also hate the Wraith, but the Wraith's weakened position gives them more options rather than the Vong who would destroy and take away their ships and enslave them. And then of course, there is the Tari or Earth. While yes, Atlantis has left Pegasus, in both the books slash comic stories, they return to Pegasus, and I don't see them abandoning the people of Pegasus to this new threat. Though at most, they would only be able to send Atlantis in at least two ships. However, both ships do have Ancient and Asgard technology, making them some of the most advanced ships in the Stargate universe.
That's a kill. Another thing to consider is that Vong society operated under a caste system, with those in the lower caste not being treated very well, such as the shamed ones who would go on to play a major part in the Vong losing the war in Legends. In Stargate, Earth has plenty of experience working with rebel groups such as the Jaffa or Tok'ra against the Gu'uld. The Wraith didn't have many dissidents, it was really just Michael and Todd, and even then Todd's debatable. But this means there is a weakness in Vong society that can be exploited that you can't really do with the Wraith. This war would almost be a repeat of the second Wraith Replicator War, where it ended in allied victory. So yeah, to wrap it up, I don't think the Yuzong Vong would win in a war with the Wraith or conquer the Pegasus Galaxy. If they acted fast enough, I can see them winning, maybe spreading the Hoffman drug around more than Michael did to poison the Wraith's food supply, but I think there are too many factors acting against them. As for how the war would end, I'm not entirely sure. If it was just the Wraith, I could see them wiping out the Vong. If Earth was involved, I could see a treaty being formed. With the Vong being forced to disarm and being given a single planet or region of space to live in. This is how the Vong were treated in the Star Wars galaxy and the Stargate books a similar treaty was made with the Wraith. So yes, that is how I think this war would end, but what do you think? Do you think the Vong would lose the war? Or do you think the Vong would have won this war? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below, leave a like and subscribe, follow me on my social medias, and remember... There is no reason for us to be at odds, John Shepard. We need each other. Thank you.